This is part two of the Sheikh Al Imam Al Muhaddith Al Mujaddid Abi Abdul Rahman Mukbil Mahad Al Wadi. His advice to the Jinn Ahlul Sunnah from amongst the Jinn. His advice to the Muslims from Ahlul Sunnah amongst the Jinn. <coughs> Apologize for the interruption and uh, inshallah, tabarakul, tabarakul, we continue. I have a correction to make. Um, <clears throat> in the beginning, the Shaykh had mentioned the hadith that was in the Bukhari and Muslim, and I quoted in translation half of it. Uh, <clears throat> I need to finish the hadith. Uh, it's the hadith of Jirir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received a pledge from him, Jirir, and the rest of the Muslims that they would establish the Salah, that they would make the Salah, and that they would um, pay the Zakah, And that they would uh, give nos to every Muslim, meaning, and they give a good word to every Muslim, um, give the aid to the Muslim when the Muslim needs the aid. As the Prophet he said, "Wansar akhaka, zaliman aw mafluman, waqila ya Rasulullah." Ahada. هَذَا مَثْلُومٌ وَمَا بَالَ الظَّالَمٌ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمٌ يَمْنَعَهُ أو كَمَا قَالَ Where the Prophet ﷺ, he said the example of this hadith that the Shaykh is mentioning where they made a pledge to the Prophet to make the Salah, pay the Zakah, and they will give nos to every Muslim. We said nos also means to help the Muslim when the Muslim is in need. Of Salam, he said in the other hadith of Sahih Muslim that you should help your brother whether he be the oppressed or the oppressor. Help your brother mother, whether he be the oppressed or the oppressor. So they said well, we understand this is the one who's being harmed. Help him. But what about and how can you help the one who is doing the oppression? So the Prophet of Salem, he said to stop him, prevent him, and don't let him do it. This is how he helps him. So here, Jarir ibn Abdullah said, we made the pledge of the Prophet to make the salah, to pay the zakah, and to give a help to every Muslim, or to advise when you can in the proper time and fashion, <clears throat> when it would be most beneficial and useful to advise the Muslim to do so and the Babaka Lofikum to defend um, <clears throat> the honor of the Muslim to um, remind the Muslim and like this and this was the first hadith that he mentioned it was in the Bukhari Muslim then he mentioned the hadith of Tamim Ad-Darami Tamim Ad-Darami where the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Adin Nasiha, and these were the first two hadith the Shaykh you mentioned. And I made the mistake in translation. I left off the total hadith and jumped to the second hadith. Wallah Musta'at. Tayyip. So Shaykh he left off with mentioning the hadith of Allah ibn Mas'ud, where <clears throat> the Shaykh was making the point that uh, there were some people historically including during the time of the Prophet, they used to take the jinns um, as protectors from evil. They would seek help from the jinn um, in a way that only Allah should be sought. If there's some harm that you don't know about, but you feel like there's some harm going to reach you, you can't go to anyone except Allah, to Allah because the harm is of the unseen. None knows the unseen except Allah. So you're invoking the jinn in a way at a time for a reason that only it should be done to Allah. Likewise, if you fear some harm, 
then we understand from Islam that that harm is only written by Allah to touch you out of his wisdom, out of his knowledge like this. So therefore, he's the only one that could remove that harm or um, hold that harm back. As Prophet used to say in the Qalut, the, the prayer in the Salat al-Witr and in the time of Salat al-Tarawih, Ramadan and Qiyam al and Tuhajjid, at the end of the 13 raka, or the 11 raka, whichever narration you take, as both of them are sahih, the Prophet would say, وَقِيْنِي شِغَ مَا قَدَيْتِ نَعَمْ وَقِيْنِي شِغَ مَا قَدَيْتِ And save me from the evil that you have already wrote that may touch me. So here the point the Shaykh is making, Rahimahullah, that his people used to take the jinn as protectors. And Allah Ta'ala prohibited this and he blamed it in the Quran and revealed verses concerning it. And that in the hadith of Levin and Mas'ud, a man met some jinns and they told him to go back because there's some harm in the road. And <clears throat> this is to show that they're Muslims and they were not trying to get him. If you do this, we'll protect you uh, like this to make him inclined to a shirk, which you, when you seek assistance from the jinn to protect you from evil, then this is shirk. And then the sheikh, he went on to quote, uh, talking about the fact that this happened in the time of the Prophet where people were seeking the help and refuge from jinns and they were doing so to a group of jinns that had accepted Islam while the people didn't know that they had became Muslim and that they would not help them in this regard because the jinns know that this is shirk they were seeking the assistance of those Muslim jinns and a way of shirk, and those gems refused. Now, and al Tabaraku wa Ta'ala revealed verses talking about this being part of the Islam. When you accept Islam, you obey Allah, you stay away from shirk, and like this. The Shaykh, he quote <coughs> some verses of Allah, will give the meaning to um, translate the meaning <coughs> of the verse in English as best as possible. Bismillah. The Shaykh, he mentioned the verse of Tabarak wa Ta'ala where <coughs> the jinns were trying to uh, be worshipped by human beings. Human beings were seeking to worship the jinn, and Allah revealed the verse, and uh, those jinns refused. And they were from amongst those who <coughs> um, sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being worshipped. And then the Shaykh he mentioned another verse in the Quran where Allah said, Ya ma'ashar al jinn, <coughs> O group of jinns, do not hear and listen to the ayat <coughs> of your Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, mentioned the guidance of Islam and admonish those other jinns that were allowing the humans to still make shirk with them by seeking the assistance and those jinns in a shirky way, in a way that is equal to shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said to the group of jinns, say to them, has not a messenger come to you <clears throat> reading to you the verses of mine? And then the sheikh is going to talk about what the people of knowledge say about the meaning of this verse. <laughs> And those gents, they will be questioned on the day of judgment. The Sheikh he continues to quote the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning those gents that <clears throat> used to allow the people to make shirk with them, allow the people to come to them to seek 
the help from the jinns, that the jinns will protect them from evil, that the jinns would remove evil. And none can protect you, none can remove evil from you except Allah Tabarakahu wa Ta'ala. So this is shirk. Now Tabarakahu wa Ta'ala is mentioning in the likes of these verses the Shaykh is quoting that on the, of the day of judgment, Yom al Qiyamah, Allah would ask them, um, did not we send a messenger to you? As the Prophet Sallam was to um, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, the jinn and mankind. And the Prophet himself said he was sent to Thakalain. Thakalain means two species, the species of jinn and human beings. So Allah Tabarakul wa ta'ala will ask them, did not we send a messenger from amongst you? Meaning from amongst the either human beings, which was the Prophet Sallallahu Muhammad, or as some scholars have uh, understood, uh, understood this verse, minkum, meaning from amongst you, that every people have a messenger to them, every species that were involved in the obligation of being called to Islam, including the jinn. So the verse here, some scholars say it means that Allah sent the messenger to them, meaning that someone from amongst the jinn that accepted Islam went and would call the other jinns to obey and call the other jinns to accept the <coughs> shahada to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as messenger. And not that he's a messenger that has received revelation and he's a prophet, but that he himself was sent, meaning Allah decreed that that jinn would go and call the other jinns to the haq. Or that it means that the Prophet came to both men and jinn and this is the messenger that will come with a book and so forth. So this the Shaykh is mentioning and that on Yom Al-Qiyamah Allah will ask them these questions and they will say certainly a messenger came to us um, and they will be a witness at that point of, against their own soul as they used to continue to allow the people to worship them while the messenger had called them away from that. <coughs> الكريمة نعم أنه أرسل إليهم وقد اختلف العلماء هل من الجن رسل أن الرسل من الإنس And the Sheikh has mentioned what I already translated and that is at this part of the verse uh, the, the Mursil the one who um, comes to them <coughs> the scholars differ as to whether this messenger is a messenger from amongst the jinn itself or is it talking about the messenger to man and jinn, the Prophet Muhammad. So the Sheikh is mentioned in this point. <laughs> The Sheikh, he said, therefore, <clears throat> know that there are many issues like this that are very broad and vast when it comes to the jinn. This issue, for example, what does the verse mean when Allah said, and did not we send to you a message from amongst yourselves? Some of the scholars take a different approach to this verse, and they say that this means that the jinns had a messenger just like the humans had a messenger. Others say that the meaning here is talking about the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to them as he was the messenger to everyone, to Nas Ejma'in, and they're considered Nas, they're considered the people that are a jinn type of people. So the Sheikh, off of this point, he elaborates saying that, therefore, there are many issues like this concerning the jinn, and that if you were right to write a book or to author a book concerning the topic of discussion, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the title, or we should say the subject matter. We were to write a book about the subject matter concerning jinns in general. You may write something 
um, the size of uh, maybe um, the books, the likes of Real the Salihin, where if you look at Real the Salihin, uh, the just the body of it, the textual metan that the Imam al Nawi wrote is it's nice and sizable. And this is without explanation. So Sheikh is saying, if you were to write about the jinn, it may amount to something like that in size, that in number, or more. And that is because <clears throat> there are so many issues that are tied to the jinn, such as what he has already mentioned. Some of them are believers, some of them are disbelievers, some of them are in different groups and sects, and that they themselves, they come and they do... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, mean they do have the ability to interact, to mingle, to have some effect or authority over humans. They have the ability to interact, to have some effect, to um, <clears throat> take authority or, or control over human beings. And the Sheikh will talk about some of the difference of opinion concerning that. From amongst the issues that would enable a person to write lengthily on the subject matter of the jinn. The Sheikh is talking about whether or not the shaitan, which here the shaitan, a shaitan means the head wicked disbeliever of the jinn, which what iblis, ma'ruf and who iblis, which it is known and clear he's iblis. As the Tabarak what Allah said. Illa Iblis, except Iblis. So we know this is his name. And Tabaraku wa ta'asa wa kana min al jinn. Fa fasaqa an amari rabbi. And he was from the jinn and he disbelieved and he stubbornly resisted and disobeyed the command of his Lord. Tayyip. So here the Sheikh is saying, as it relates to the vastness and the discussion of the jinn, which would make a person right pretty lengthily another one of the issues of difference of opinion and discussion of controversial con contra, uh, uh, contra, contra, uh, controversial issue around the jinn is whether or not they can take control over humans he said and this is one of the opinions of one of the groups called the Mu'tazila Mu'tazila or from the early Deviant groups, along with the Khawarij, the early and deviant groups, along with the Qadriya, the early deviant groups, along with the Jabriya, early deviant groups, along with the Murjaiya, early deviant groups, along with Yani Madan those who <clears throat> went extreme and <clears throat> they're following the messenger and the issue of Ali. Ibn Abi Talib. So all of these different groups, the point the Sheikh is making is that <clears throat> they have different beliefs. And from amongst it, <clears throat> the Murtazila, this deviant group that has um, <clears throat> issues that they deny about Allah himself, they also deny <clears throat> about creation of Allah, such as the jinn. And they deny whether or not the jinn can have authority over human beings or not, they say no. <clears throat> they say no. While the belief of Islam, the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the belief of Salaf al Salih, the belief of the Muslims in the correct group, the body of the Muslims from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Itaba Tabi'een, those who are upon that way, is that the jinns can have authority over humans. They can't have authority over humans. In opposition to what the Murtazila and other deviant groups reject. <clears throat> النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وقد جاءت امراه كما في حديث ابن 
عباس لما اتفق على ايه؟ يا تمرار وقالت يا رسول الله اني اوفر فادعو الله لي وان شئت صبرت ولك الجنه وان شئت دعوت الله لا لك فقالت اصبر ولي الجنه ولكني اتكشف فادعو الله لي يا رسول الله الا اتكشف. <تصفيق> The Sheikh, he says, hey, now I'm certainly the jinns can have authority and come down upon the people. He said, and this is in opposition to the Murtazila, which Allah, our Lord, our mighty Lord, has said in his noble book, <clears throat> And indeed, those who indulge in riba, usury, those who indulge in riba, usury, interest, then they only establish against themselves the type of sickness and the type of <clears throat> evil, the type of hold upon themselves with regards to this interest, like the example of the authority and the hold and the <clears throat> sickness that is taken over them by the shaitan's touch. So those who indulge in riba. They themselves, they only have the effect and that which is upon them, the authority, the negative things, the sicknesses, the following of desires and the disobedience, all of that takes over them just like the shaitan takes over them when they're touched by the shaitan. And this is a proof that the shaitan has the ability to influence, to uh, have authority, and to control the human being by the permission of Allah. Then he mentioned the hadith is collected in the Bukhari and Muslim, <clears throat> where the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned a lady came to him والسلام, and she said, O Messenger of Allah, make dua for me, for verily I have. Um, epilepsy. I have seizures. And when I have these seizures, these fits of seizure, I become uncovered. I become undressed. All my clothes, I uh, find myself with them off. I'm nude. So make a dua to Allah that he heals me so this doesn't happen. So the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, he said, if you like, if you request, if you wish, I can make that dua for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can heal you. But if you like, I can refrain from asking Allah and you can be patient with this type of test. And being patient with that test will earn you Jannah. The Shaykh quotes this hadith, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatan wasi'a, as a proof that this type of epilepsy, this type of seizure, is from the touch, the authority, and the effect of the shaitan. And we know there's some uh, medical, clinical side to the issue of seizure. But, some scholars have mentioned even that has to do with shaitan. Others say, it's because of something that may be genetically or clinically or medically or mentally a person has wrong with them and it has nothing to do with the uh, gin. It can be from bad medicine or some type of reaction to something. And others say there's a type of seizure, which is the same type of seizure, but the reason the person has it has nothing to do with genetics, has nothing to do with mental or medical Issues, rather the shaitan has touched them and made them have these seizures. So here the shaykh is using this hadith. It's titlal and ala anna jinn 
Mada babakalo fikum lahum kudra an yatasalle an yat an yatasalle ta'ala nasi that this proves that the jinns have the ability to affect take hold have authority to possess the human beings in contradiction to the deviant groups such as the Mu'tazila and others and philosophers and all of these type of people bid'a that deny this Allah musta'an He said, another proof of the fact that the jinns interact like humans and they have the ability to influence and to possess and have authority over humans. And that from amongst them are those who are good and bad, those who are Muslim and non-Muslim. Sheikh Islam Taymiyyaz wrote an essay about the jinn. He's wrote an essay about the jinn. And in this essay about the jinn, he has mentioned that the Prophet was sent to both jinn and mankind. And the Prophet himself used to read over jinns, like you read Quran and he over human beings. Uh, and also, they used to come gathered to listen to the Prophet Sallam. Like people come and listen to the Sheikh or the Sahaba, gathered to listen to the Prophet. They used to do that. And this shows that um, all of the things that humans can do to humans, then the jinns can do those things and more. And this the Sheikh is mentioning or something to this effect. <laughs> The Sheikh, he says, so therefore, the idea that the jinns cannot affect, control, have authority, possess human beings is the opposite of what these people have claimed. And again, Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah in his book um, about the jinn, Rahat al where he talks about this issue of the jinn, he mentions that the jinns they have this ability. And then the Shaykh he um, cited the hadith of the Prophet where um, where the <coughs> uh, the jinn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the prophet then, then the Shaykh he cited the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, concerning the jinn in this regard concerning the jinn as it relates to their ability to affect, touch or have some type of um, authority partial 
um, a, a minor or major effect and or authority or possession as it relates to human beings. And he said that from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is the Hadith that is collected and the Sahihain with the Prophet. He said there is not anyone that has come into this earth. There is not anyone that will be born in this life except that the shaitan will prick him. The shaitan will prick him and cause him to be affected except the son of Mary and his mother Mary alayhim salam. And then he cited the verse in Surah Ali Amran where Tabarak wa ta'ala talked about the dua of Mary's mother concerning her and the grandson which would have been Isa ibn Maryam where she said inni a'iduha bika wa dhurriyataha min ash-shaytan ar-rajim verily o allah i am seeking your protection i am seeking refuge in you for her meaning my daughter and her offsprings that you protect them from the shaytan the curse and the shaykh is using this to show that the evidence is abundant when you talk about the question, can the jinns uh, ma'adha interact? Can the jinn, uh, jinns ma'adha um, affect? Can the jinns ma'adha uh, barakallahu fikum have power or some type of um, authority over the human being? The answer is yes. قبل هذا الملاسفة ينكرون وجود الجن وقد انزلق محمد رشيد رضا انزلق في هذا وقال إن الجن عبارة عن الجراثيم وسبحان الله وسبحان الله The Sheikh says and let's back up a minute talking about the groups that deny these things about the jinn that Allah and his messenger has informed us. He said, let us go back to the Mu'tazila, which we said is an early deviant group from amongst the Muslims. They deny many of the attributes of Allah. Some of them deny all of them. Some of them deny partial of the attributes of Al-Tabarakul wa Ta'ala. And they have much kufr disbelief and their statements and beliefs and they have some shirk with them as well. They, the Mu'tazila, the Sheikh said, let's go back to them. He said, besides the issue of them denying that the jinns cannot affect, have authority, possess, or do anything like that to the human beings, before that, they even, moreover, they deny the existence of the jinn. They deny the existence of the jinn. So you see how one thing leads to another. You deny the existence of the jinn. Therefore, when it comes to the issue of them being able to affect, to have authority, to um, interact, or to possess humans, then by default you're going to deny that too because you already de denied the existence of the jinn. He said and. <clears throat> uh, one of the people named um, uh, Rashid Rabba, he wrote a book that in this book itself, it calls him to be Zanadiqa. And Zanadiqa is a term that we should not use. We should not throw around. Um, we should not take it as a light term. Sometimes we say and we learn terms and we use them, but this is a heavy term. And this is something that ulama of high level and character and, and, and knowledge and experience, even them, they're careful. Because this word, zanadaqa, it's a word that has to do with bid'ah. Meaning someone brings a statement or action, uh, a belief into the religion, that goes to the level of disbelief. As we mentioned, some bid'ah, remains a person in the fold of Islam and other acts of bid'ah goes beyond the level of being a Muslim you leave Islam 
So this statement of Rashid uh, Allah uh, of Rabba, um, Muhammad Rabba, yani Allah Mada Naam uh, in his book is a statement that not only is bid'ah but it takes you out of Islam, and that is, yani he said that the jinn, they're just a expression that has to do with um, being um, fiery or um, being angry or some type of bad disposition or something like this. And we understand, Allah Musta'an, many people adopted the same thing. Come out, you say Qutb, Naam, say Qutb, Yani Fi Kitabi, Fi Adil al Quran. Naam in his book, The Shade in the Shade of Quran, say Qutb. And this tafsir he mentions similar. That the jinn is just when a person becomes angry or becomes um very upset or you know, he, the fiery disposition in man. Wahakada Qad Kala Muhammad Warth al Deen. Wala Warf the Shay Min al Deen. The one his name was Warth al Deen, the one who inherited the religion. And he didn't inherit anything of the religion. Because once you make statements like this, as the Sheikh has mentioned about the author of the book, this is Yani Kolan Sanadika. This is a statement that is not only innovation, that is not only something new in creed, but it is that which takes you outside of this land, takes you outside the deen. Because Allah wa ta'ala, as you heard many quotes, has verified this about the jinn and has informed you about that of the unseen. Now for you to deny it, then this is like our love in the bass he said, and read the shay and men read the harf in the Quran for Qad Kafir. Whoever denies one letter of the Quran is disbelieved. O Kama Qal Ibn Abi Is Fi Akita Tahawi Qal Man Rud the Ayatun Mil al Qurani for Qad Kafir. As the great scholar Imam al Tahawi and the explanation of it, Ibn Abi is said, point number 45, as this book is written in points, whosoever denies a single verse of the Quran, then indeed he has disbelief. So here, the Allah Musta'an, the likes of these statements go way back, and we see that there are those that are in opposition to the book of Allah and Sunnah's Messenger. Understand the Sahaba, the way of Islam, the Immat al Huda wal Burhan, those who are guided, those who are upon the path of Huda, those who are the way of Salaf Saleh, and the likes of those, as Sheikh mentioned, Muhammad Radda, Yani al Mada, Wa Kadalik al Murtazila Kabal Dalik, the Murtazila, Wa Bada Dalik, Mada, Quan Muslimin, say Qut Aoud Billah, Wa Hakada. وفض الدين وما وفض إلا صاره يعني في الحلق and he did not inherit anything except that which ended him in destruction that which a person denies of the creed the statement of Allah the book of Allah the speech of Allah then this is kufr يعني اتقاد this is kufr اتقاد the disbelief of creed which nullifies a person's Islam that's Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, salam wa afiyah, wa la ayyadu billah. May Allah protect us all, and I seek refuge in Allah from that. The Sheikh he says, so the likes of these philosophers, the likes of these philosophers and those like the statement of Muhammad Radda who wrote the book or Shid Radda who wrote this book which 
the likes of him, they write these kind of statements in the books in order to appease or to aid or to only make available tools for the Mushtari Keen against Islam. And the Mushtari Keen, we say they are the Orientalists. They study Islam and they look for things to attack Islam. They study Islam. They study the knowledge of Islam. And in some cases, they know more than the Muslim because they do in-depth studies. Some of them learn Arabic. And I don't mean like Book 1 of Medina, Book 2, or uh, Kitab al-Sasi from Egypt. And this is not to belittle those uh, endeavors. Or Baini Adek La. They study Nahu Sarf Balaga, Yani al Alum al Quran, they study the things that will allow you to go deep into the knowledge. But however, the intention, Allah Musta'an, is to use what they know against the Muslims and Islam to prove that Islam is not the, 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 the correct way, that Islam is the religion of falsehood. Well, they are the lie. So, the Sheikh mentioned the likes of this author who wrote in his book that the jinn means this, it means that, and it means, I mean, uh, an, an expression that, that talks about uh, anger and fire and, and, and uh, um, being upset and dispositions that are bad, then they only write this in aid of the likes of the Orientalist, the Mushtari King. He said, and to begin with, the Mu'tazila, those who deny that the jinn can have any involvement, any type of effect, any type of authority or possession over humans, to begin with, they already disbelieve in the existence of the jinn. He said, and this is what you find the likes of these people um, in their teachings doing um, against the deen of Allah wa ta'ala. <laughs> العنوان العنوان صيحة الحق ماذا لرجل يقال له درويش تكلم على التوحيد ولكنه لا يقع أيضا وعنك The Sheikh he said and there's a book called صيحة الحق صيحة الحق نعم by uh, Arthur called a درويش a درويش he said likewise this book should be avoided and should be um, warned against because this author he writes some of these same statements in his book. He said, and Allah, oh Allah Musta'an, he said that this author he writes some of these same statements in his book, and this person himself again he is a nadiqah, meaning anybody who denies the existence of the jinn. Or anybody that says that the jinn can't interact with people or that they can't um, have an effect or authority to possess the people. Or anybody that says jinn is just an expression that means this, that, and the third, then they are zanadiqah. Zanadiqah meaning an innovator that has left Islam. <laughs> كيف تنكر يا مسكين ورب مصنوع لا يحفظ القرآن وتجده وتجده يقرأ القرآن ورب مصنوع لا يحسن اللغة الإنجليزية وتجده يتكلم باللغة الإنجليزية ورب مصنوع لا يحسن اللغة التركية فتجده يتكلم باللغة التركية وهكذا أيضا أمر محشوش وأنت تزعم أن هذا لا ماذا لا يا يا لا يقولون وتستدل بماذا إن عبادي ليس لك عليهم شرطان. He said so the likes of this person Darwish who was a person that was known in Yemen, he wrote this book. He's a Zanadika. We mentioned the Onaveda that has reached the level of of Kufr. He leaves Islam. Said so this man, he writes books, he talks against the Tawheed, he talks with all of these different statements of shirk and like this. He said, 